go through a couple examples here. Now, as you guys kind of notice, and here are these graphs, um, especially like something like this. Here are the domain. You guys can see that this graph continually expands, right? So visually, determine if something is a function is pretty simple. Do the vertical line test. See if it works. The domain, you kind of look for the arrows and kind of see what values are a part of it. But here, if you have no idea what the square root of x minus 1 looks like, to identify the domain range, you'd either have to graph it and then do it, or um, you'd have to understand what the graph automatically looks like. Now, if f of x equals square root of x minus 1, there's a couple things that we need to understand. For this equation, let's just pretend this one is y equals negative x squared. Or let's do f of x. Right? That, does everybody agree? Quadratics? Do you guys kind of remember quadratics? OK. So the one thing I want you guys to think about, and here's the main important thing. We're all done after this. A function is an input and output, right? You plug in a number, and you get an output. Is there any number I cannot plug in for x and get an output? Well, if you do 0, you'd have 0, negative 0 squared, which would still be 0. So your output would be 0, which in the case, 0, 0 is a point. Is there any number that you cannot like put? No, you're, uh, for every number, every input, you're always going to have an output. Now, let's look at these two examples. What values can I not take the square root of? Yeah? Negative. negative. So which values are going to make this negative? So what I like to do is what we'll do to determine our domain, anytime you have a radical, you're going to be x minus 1. You take whatever you, you take your um, quantity, and you say it has to be greater than or equal to 0. You guys agree with me? Whatever is inside of this has to be greater than or equal to 0, right? You can't take the square root of a negative number. You're going to get imaginary numbers, right? So to solve for this, add 1, add 1, x is greater than or equal to 1. So that means the values of this domain are going to be all the values that are greater than or equal to 1. So how would we write that? Well, we could write 1, that's the lowest value, to infinity. OK? Does that make sense? Um, we're not going to deal with. Um,